Mina, konnichiwa. Jesus freaking gamer here. We're in the book of 2 Samuel now. They were originally one book. I guess maybe over put it in English, which is like, you know, this is a really friggin' big book. Let's split this up into two parts. I don't know. Either way, it's um, 2 Samuel chapter 1. Saul's just died, and someone brings the news to David. And David's reaction is very, very different from how most people would react to the man who's been trying to kill them for so long. Now, David wasn't willing to stretch forth his hand to kill Saul. He just wasn't willing to do it because he considered Saul the Lord's anointed, and he just said, you know, the Lord will take care of him when the time comes. But something really, really interesting happens when that time came. And so let's go to... Let's just start at verse 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, on the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. And he goes on to explain to David that Saul and Jonathan that Saul loved died. And so he was like, how? and so in verse 5, So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan and his son are dead? That the young man who told him says, I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa. There was Saul leaning on his spear, and, the, and indeed the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. And I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me again, Please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. So I stood over him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them here to my Lord. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes, and tore them, and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept, and fasted until evening for Saul, and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. So even though basically Saul got his comeuppance, and from what we can tell in the Bible, Jonathan, he didn't do anything overtly evil or sinful. He simply stood by his father until the end. And since he was on the side of his father, who had forsaken the Lord, when his father fell, he fell as well. Was Jonathan wrong to do that? I don't know. I personally don't think so. If he had sided with David, he would have had to have sided against his own father. Even David was unwilling to kill the anointed of the Lord who was Saul. Lots of questionable things in the book of First and Second Samuel. Lots of political intrigue, etc. Like I've said, please read the, bo the book of Samuel, First and Second Samuel. It is so good. It is so chock full of just goodies and suspense and drama and all these horrible things where it's just like there's not really... A definite clear right answer so but David isn't quite done here just yet verse 13 then David said to the young man who told him where are you from and he answered I am the son of an alien an Amalekite so David said to him how was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed then David called one of the young men and said go near and execute him and he struck him so that he died so David said to him your blood is on your own head for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Then David lamented this with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. He goes on to write a psalm, a lamentation, over the death of not just Jonathan, whom his soul loved, but over Saul, who was trying to kill him. David's attitude was so different from most of the kings back in the day where there was a political rival. They would just kill them and their entire family and anyone related to him. David refused to kill Saul, even though Saul repeatedly tried to kill him. And when he, the man was finally killed, he executed the man who claimed to have killed him and then wrote a song of lamentation. So either David was absolutely crazy or he had a knowledge of the love of God that eludes most Christians to this day. I tend to lean towards the latter on that one. God imbue in me and in all of his church a heart of love, genuine love for our enemies like Jesus commanded us to do. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.